Welcome back, Saitai Tech. In this video, I want to do an unboxing review of the OMAX 40x 2500x trinocular compound microscope that uses a 5 megapixel camera. Let's get started. First, what I need to do is simply open the box, open up the top, flip over the flaps, and you can see there's some parts of the microscope. And now a closer look. This right here is the 5 volt power supply, which will connect to the light inside of your microscope. The USB connector that connects to the 5 megapixel camera. And this right here is the 5 megapixel camera with a little lens cap. And this USB connector connects to the camera just like this. And then you can plug it into your computer and with using the CD-ROM that contains the software, allowing you to be able to use this 5 megapixel camera in your computer. A closer look. And this is what the camera looks like and the brand of the camera. And you can see that this is the OMAX brand, the same brand as the microscope. And you also get this green microscopy filter, which is very useful to be able to block out infrared light and ultraviolet light. And it allows you to be able to see certain subjects under the microscope in a shadowy tint, be able to observe them in a different way. And this right here is a lens oil that you can use for the 100 times lens on the microscope, which is the larger one. It has helped to increase the magnification and allowing that 100 times lens to work. And this right here is the 10 time lens eyepieces. And these right here are the adapters that you can put onto the three different parts of the microscope. These type of adapters are meant to use for different size lenses. Not really sure how they work though, but I'll figure it out in the future. And these right here are the 25 times lens eyepieces. Same thing as the 10 times lenses, except the 25 allows you to zoom in a little closer than the 10 times. And now let's go a little deeper and remove the microscope out of the box. And as you can see, this microscope comes with this dust bag, which is very good, keeping dust off of the microscope, which is very important. And as you can see, this microscope looks very nice. A very heavy, sturdy, metallic body of the microscope, which makes the microscope very durable and very reliable. Which means this microscope is supposed to last a lifetime. And this right here is the four different size lenses and it rotates very smoothly and clicks into place to each lens allowing you to be able to see your subject up close the large knobs and the small knobs that are on the left side and the right side of the microscope allows the tray to move up and down to be able to focus on your subject the larger knobs make the tray move up and down fast and the little knobs allows you to do fine focusing and this is perfect for people who are left and right handed and this is the iris which adjusts the aperture of the light this is a light switch that turns the light on and off. This is a dimmer switch which adjusts the brightness of the light. These knobs right here will allow you to move the glass tray that you put on the microscope back and forth and side to side. A very useful feature of this microscope, you could be able to turn this little knob right here which allows you to take the viewing part of the microscope and allow it to be able to rotate. So if you're with two or three people or four people, you can be able to rotate it all around so that way everyone can see together without having to move around the microscope. Personally, I like this angle the best. Some people might like it on the opposite side, but for me personally, I prefer this side. This is also a very useful feature if you want to be able to adjust it to fit the size of your head because everyone's eyes are positioned differently. So what I need to do is make an adjustment so it's comfortable for me to be able to view things inside the microscope. This cap right here, I can remove and be able to take this piece and put it on top. And this piece will allow me to take the 5 megapixel camera and put it into place. Remove the cap that is on this piece. And then remove the lens cap of this 5 megapixel camera. And place it into this piece, allowing me to be able to view things into the microscope. And then take the USB connector and connect it to the 5 megapixel camera. And it should look just like this. This lens adjustment feature is very useful, especially for those who require glasses that can actually use this microscope without the need of glasses, so that way you can adjust the focal lens that matches the prescription of your eyes. Remove the cap and you can be able to take these eyepiece lenses, place it in, such as this 25 times lens, and a very interesting feature is you can even remove the camera and place it into this part of the microscope. If you want, you can take a second camera and put it into the microscope, and you can be able to use two cameras or three cameras in the microscope to plug into three different computers. Or if you wanted to, you can always choose one eye and place it into the microscope. Or if you're viewing it as two people or three people, maybe three eyes can look into the microscope at the same time. 
I can remove these 25 lenses and replace it with the 10 time lenses. Swap them and you can put them into place just like this. And for me personally, I prefer the 10 time lenses. They just feel more comfortable and you'd be able to view whatever you're looking at in a more wider view. Next, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the 5 volt power supply into the microscope. Plug it in. Turn on the switch and it turns on the light of the microscope. This little knob right here adjusts the brightness. So I'm going to put it on very low or very bright. And the iris of the microscope adjusts the aperture of the light of the microscope, which is very useful to view things in a different lighting. This little handle right here, you can open it up and take a microscope slide, put it in, and it holds it into place. Now let's go test out the microscope. I have right here a feather, and I'm going to simply place a feather into the microscope. Of course, it'll be better if it was a glass slide, but I don't have one currently. And now let's have a look, and now taking the camera that you're viewing this video on by simply placing it over the microscope lens, allowing you to be able to see how amazing this looks. Of course, this would be a lot better to use your actual eyes to be able to view this using this camera is just for demonstration purposes, but you get the idea of how this works. And I'll take the microscopy filter and place it over the light, and you can see how it changes the contrast of the feathers. You can see how it looks a little different, where you can be able to see the outline a lot better, and viewing it through the 10 time lens looks very good. And now on the 25 time lens, you can see things look a lot closer. Personally, I prefer the 10 time lenses because it gives you more of a wide angle view. And now it's time to test out the 5 megapixel camera. As you can see, I already installed the software, and it looks just like this when you open it up. Drag your mouse over to the camera list which is on the top left of the software. Double click on it. Wait for the camera to load and it opens up just like this. And in my opinion, five megapixel cameras are not good at all. This is actually equivalent to the first phone cameras that came out. The first phone cameras were actually very terrible and the quality is very bad. In my opinion, this is very good to use if you want to photograph only, and even that isn't very good. And as you can see, it seriously lags. If I try to focus on something, it takes a very long time to focus, which is actually very difficult to use this camera. So carefully make some very slow minor adjustments and you can be able to view whatever you're looking at. But if you were trying to look at like say a parasite or a little microbe that is moving, it's very difficult to use this camera because it moves around too much. As you can see, I'm having difficulty because of the lag trying to focus on whatever I'm looking at, which is the feather, and it's very difficult to do because this is lagging too much. But you can see that it looks very nice, and this lag is very bad. And now what I want to do is do a test recording. Simply press record and now it opens up a new window which is the video format and it's showing me the different types of video formats I can use. I choose MP4 which is the highest quality. Click on next and now it's giving me a choice to where to place the file and the file name and now simply finish and it will start recording. Okay so now I'm done recording and now let's see how the video looks and as you can see the video looks exactly the same as the software giving me the same issue which you know a 5 megapixel camera is not very good for filming. And now I want to test out the photo quality by simply pressing the snap button to photograph whatever image I'm looking at. And I'll press snap and it photographs what you're looking at. Press save as and as you can see the photograph looks exactly what you see in the software. Which in my opinion the photograph looks okay. So as you can see the 5 megapixel camera is not very good. And there you have it, my unboxing review of the Omax 40x2500x trinocular compound microscope that uses a 5 megapixel camera. Now in my opinion, this microscope is a very, very good microscope. So in my opinion of this microscope, I definitely give it a 5 star rating because it's a very durable and very nice professional feeling microscope. The only thing I don't like about it is the 5 megapixel camera. Of course, if you wanted to, you can always upgrade it to a more expensive 20 megapixel camera, which will clearly make a bigger difference, 
but it costs way too much. This is why I would like for you to subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified for a future video where I'm going to create an adapter to allow me to place the DSLR camera into this microscope to be able to view things with a much better camera with a very affordable low cost of probably $10 to $15. Thank you for watching Sci-Dai Tech. I hope you learned something new, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and of course click on the bell icon to be notified of future Sci-Dai Tech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.